feeling behind my eyes. You stood. Clues so try and guess, okay? So I'll give you three clues. First clue: this animal is really small. Okay? Could be anything, right? Could be a mouse. Could be a hamster. Second clue: this animal is native to the Sahara Desert. Third clue: this animal has really big ears. It could be a fennec fox. It could be a fennec fox. I also think you've been to this show before, okay? All right, tell me what we're going to do. I'm going to get off of the stage and my very good friend, Fox Shark, is going to come out and meet us. Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. This is Fox Shark. I love you, Fox Vitra. Now, as you can see, he is a fennec fox, so good job. Fennec foxes are able to leap up into the air as well as leap forward 1 to 1.2 meters in length. We are native to the Sahara Desert, and right now, Fox is going to show us that lovely jump. Look at that, very nice indeed. Apart from that, they have very sharp and curved claws. This enables them to dig around in the desert sand, looking for things like small insects, small mammals, and even arachnids, like scorpions. I remember when I told you that they have really big ears. Well, take a look. These ears help them to listen out for prey, as well as predators sneaking up behind them, and helps them to get rid of any excess heat out there in the desert. All right, and off they go back home. Let's give it up for Fox Shark, the Fennec Fox, along with Pavitra, the human. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, for this next segment, we're going to stay in the African continent. So please remain seated and keep your masks on. A famous hunter from the African continent. These animals possess a key sense of smell. Able to detect carcasses from many miles away. The largest of the hyena species, this is the spotted hyena. Their powerful jaws are able to crush bones, including those of elephants. With their excellent digestive system, they able to digest their entire prey. This includes the skin, teeth, bones, bones, and even the hoof. They're able to run for long distances in search of their prey, and this is due to the size of their large hearts. Spotted hyenas can make a variety of different sounds, such as grunts, yelps, screeches, and barks. The most famous of them all would be their laughter, thus giving them the name, the laughing hyena. Now many people think that they are part of the canine family due to their dog-like features, but they're actually more closely related to the cats. And speaking of cats, coming up next in the grasslands of Africa will be our very own slender-built serval. They resemble a miniature cheetah, except they're relatively short tails, and coming out in just a bit, we have a beautiful serval by the name of Shami. Now servals feed mainly on rodents, reptiles, and even small birds. They have an excellent sense of hearing, and this enables them to locate prey hidden amongst tall grass as well as underground. This is not a serval, this is a human woman. Now this is Daphne the trainer. She is setting a very tasty treat up there in that little burrow. You'll see why in just a bit. Now here comes the queen herself, gracefully walking in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Shami. Isn't she absolutely gorgeous? These cats have long slender forepaws and this enables them to dig into burrows, hook at their prey and pull it out to eat. And while she's doing that, you can see the trainer Daphne over here. She has a feather attached to the end of a rope. When swung around, it mimics a low flying bird. Now this is something that servals would hunt for in the wild. So this is a great opportunity for Shami to show off some hunting adaptations. Her speed, her agility, and her pouncing. She's warming up. Oh, look at she's really quick. Let's give it up for Shami along with Daphne. Now, apart from having those adaptations that I mentioned, that speed, agility, and that pouncing, these animals also have really powerful hind legs, and this enables them to leap up into the air to catch a low flying bird, which is slow to take off. Now they can leap up to 10 to 15 feet, which is really, really high indeed. 
Now, apart from that, if you happen to take a look at the back of Xiaomi's ears, you might have noticed that there are black and white markings. Now, these are known as ocelli, and they act as a natural deterrent in the wild, as they kind of look like eyes in the dark. Now, as you tour around the night sky, you will come across many endangered animals, many of which are fighting a losing battle in the wild. It has been estimated that about 300 different species of animals go extinct every single year, and if we don't do something about it, but... Excuse me? Ex ex hello, excuse me? This is Toffee, everyone. You saw him at the start of the show. You know what? I was talking about Shami's adaptation. Why don't you show them yours? Come. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. He is doing that because of dexterous force. Now, dexterous force means that they are able to grip and twist things, just like the lids of these containers. But it also means that they are able to grip onto door handles, enter people's homes, and make quite a mess. Now, this is not entirely their fault. Our towns and cities have come too close to their natural habitat. And as a result of the ever-diminishing forest, they have no choice but to come into our world to feed and to survive. Now, as you can see, this is a great opportunity for Toffee to show you what raccoons would do in the wild. These animals are nocturnal animals, but despite of this, their eyesight is not really very good. So they will use that very sensitive sense of touch to feel around and figure out what it is that they're holding on to. Now, a lot of people think they see raccoons in the wild washing their food. But when their paws are put into water, in fact, those sensitive paws become even more sensitive. So they're not, in fact, washing their food. What they're doing instead is trying to figure out and make sense of what it is that they're holding on to. Just like you and I, we humans make sense of the world around us using our eyes. We see something, we know if it's dangerous, if it's edible. But for raccoons, they use their sense of touch. Now, this is Liana. She is here to usher Toffee back home. Let's just pretend that this is all part of the show. All right, Toffee, we still have some friends coming out to meet us. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Let's say bye to Toffee. And thank you to Liana. Thank you, Liana. All right, now, of course, in the wild, raccoons will not need to know how to open up plastic containers because hopefully they will not find plastic containers. But instead, they'll use the dexterity of their paws to catch things like prawns, crabs, crustaceans, pull apart the shell, and just eat the very juicy flesh that's inside. Now, with Toffee's appearance on stage here tonight, it does kind of make me wonder what it is that we humans throw away that may get these animals' attention. So you know what? Let's check out what got Toffee's attention over here. What do we have? We have some common everyday items that we see littered across the night safari every single night. We have some plastic bottles and we have a paper carton. Now, these things come from nature one way or another and they all have one thing in common. They can be re... They can be re... Recycled, of course, now all of these trash will disappear. We just started using items made from recycled materials, like this plastic here. The plastic bottle here, you'll find it at our retail stores. Go and check it out after the show. And once again, thank you, Liana. Now, we have our recycling bin here. We have our plastic bottles and we have a paper carton. In a short while, we're going to have two sisters by the names of Bubbles and Bailey. Now, Bubbles and Bailey are Asian small clawed otters, the smallest species of otters in the world. Bailey's going to come and show us how to recycle these items over here. And Bubbles is going to have a little bit of fun with her trainer. Now, what Pabisha has over there is called a target. It's a reference tool for training. So when she puts it down and when Bubbles goes towards it, what you'll hear is a bridge. That's a whistle telling her good job and then she'll get a reward. Very good to Bailey. All right, let's give it up for Bailey. Good job. Now Bubbles, because you didn't do any recycling, why don't you get started on that paper carton? No? no. I, I do it myself. Okay, you know what, you know what, we're gonna change it up a little bit. Why don't you help me out, okay? So this paper carton, we have two bins that were not used. Where do you think it goes? Paper carton, where does it go? Others, uh, very good. That was Bob and Bailey coming out here to share a very important message, and that is to reduce, reuse, and re? Recycle. Recycle, that's right. Now as our journey through the night comes to an end, we shouldn't forget the lessons learned. From the owls in the sky to the big truck on the branch, they would have remind us to protect their cousins in the wild and the fragile environments that they call home. What we do makes a difference and it is up to us what kind of difference we want to make. Because the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it for us. On that note, we hope you had a great night here tonight. My name is Kenzie on the right hand side with Don and Rainbow. The 
great horned owl, on a third side we have Daphne, along with Midnight, the Malay Fish Owl. So tonight we have Fuzzly, and thank you to each and every one of you for being a fantastic audience. Thank you so much, take care, good night, stay safe, and bye bye. Oh, but the man's